Hi, I'm Father Greg Shenden, Director of Campus Ministry here at Georgetown University, and I'd like to thank you for joining me today for this moment of spiritual continuity. I'd like to just take this brief opportunity to talk about a key facet of our Ignatian spiritual tradition here at Georgetown. This is something that goes back 500 years to our founder, St. Ignatius of Loyola, and that's the idea, the concept of discernment. Now, some of you might be familiar with the story of St. Ignatius. He was a knight errant in the 16th century, and at the age of 27, found himself uh, serving with troops at the Battle of Pamplona. And in a single afternoon in May of 1521, everything was shattered for Ignatius, both literally and figuratively, by a cannonball. His leg was shattered, but in many ways, his dreams of what his future was going to be were shattered, shattered as well. Now, in those months in his, during his recuperation at the family home in Loyola, he spent that time praying, reflecting, discerning in terms of where he'd been those first 27 years, where he was in that singular, uncertain, difficult moment, and where he was being invited. Uh, I think the first key aspect as we speak about discernment is this notion of discernment not being choosing good from bad, but choosing good from good. For Ignatius, he could have gone back to his life as a knight errant, but the more he reflected and discerned, both with head and with heart, he came to recognize he was being invited into something new and that was to follow in the footsteps of the great saints, St. Dominic, St. Francis, St. Benedict. And that is what he chose, and that is what he discerned. I think the second point regarding discernment is this notion that discernment transcends a specific moment. During that time of recuperation and discernment for Ignatius, he was looking to where he had been, who he had been, he was looking at where he was in that recuperation, who he was in that recuperation. And with those two, he was reflecting on where it was leading him. It's looking at who I've been, who I am, and who I desire, who I ought to be. I think the third and final aspect of discernment worthy of discussion today is that discernment involves both the head and the heart, the intellect and listening to one's deep desires and dreams as Ignatius did. It's looking ahead with the sense of hope and trust based on where I've been and where I am. This upcoming weekend, we're gonna be hosting our uh, annual retreat uh, for our first year students called Loyola. Uh, it will be virtual, of course, uh, but something I always like to ask our first-year students is, why Georgetown? And they'll always give me a lot of really, really good responses in terms of, well, Georgetown offers a program that I'm interested in. It offers a location I want to be in. It offers financial support. All very practical reasons and all very practical facets of discernment. But I'll, I'll always follow up and say, well, you are also choosing and discerning between Georgetown and other institutions. Why Georgetown? And they'll often respond by saying it's something not quite tangible, that it's just a feeling, it's intuition. And I think this is a key part of discernment. It is intellect, it is reason, but it is that listening to one's deep desires as well. And often our students will say, well, it just felt right. It felt home. It felt like a place where I belonged. I think those are three key elements of what discernment is about. Discerning a good from a good and coming to recognize the greater good, it's recognizing that discernment transcends where I'm at in a singular moment. 
and it's having that hope and trust that intellect, reason gets us so far, but that's where the heart steps in. I'd like to conclude with a brief prayer from the 20th century Jesuit priest, uh, who's also a philosopher, theologian, and paleontologist, Teilhard de Chardin. And this is a prayer entitled, Patient Trust. He writes, above all trust in the slow work of God. You're quite naturally impatient in everything to reach the end without delay. We should like to skip the intermediate stages. We are impatient of being on the way to something unknown, something new. And yet it is the law of all progress that it is made by passing through some stages of instability and that it may take a long time. And so I think it is with you. Your ideas mature gradually, let them grow. Let them shape themselves without undue haste. Don't try to force them on as though you could be today what time, that is to say grace and circumstances, acting on your own goodwill, will make of you tomorrow. Only God could say what this new spirit gradually forming within you will be. Give our Lord the benefit of believing that his hand is leading you and accept the anxiety of feeling yourself in suspense and incomplete. Thank you again for joining me today for this moment of spiritual continuity. Until next time, God bless, stay well, and peace.